G'day Virtual Files, this is Requiem. In this video we're going to have a look at the C47. Starting on the left, you've got the suit heat control, a radio receiver filter, an interphone jack box, and a hand microphone. Now up above both of the pilot positions, uh, you've got a few things. We're going to have a look at these two main electrical panels. On the left, you've got a parachute pack salver switch, which would release cargo if the cargo racks were installed underneath the airplane. You got a jump switch, battery masters, landing lights, which are navigation lights, the icing switches, pitot heat, oil dilution switches, you got the bailout switch, cockpit lighting, and then you got propeller feathering. Looking up in between them, this is your radio compass control unit. Looking over on the right electrical panel, you've got starter switches, cockpit lighting, an inverter, carburetor heat, propeller feathering button again, you get your recog light keying switch, as well as all the recognition light switches, which you'll cycle by using right alt and the L key. You got the panel lamp. Well as two air meters. Here you've got magnetos and under that is the altitude limit switch which sets a reference altitude for the radio altimeter. Controlled automatically in game because if you maintain an altitude it'll set itself to that altitude and use that in conjunction with altitude limit lights and it lets you know if you're able to hold a specific altitude when you're dropping cargo or paratroops. And below that is a magnetic compass at your main panel, there's a clock, marker beacon indicator, airspeed indicator, altimeter, artificial horizon, an ILS indicator, turn and bank indicator, vertical speed indicator, remote indicator compass, a radio compass, and zooming in is a radio altitude as well as an altitude limit indicator which links up to the uh, altitude setting earlier. Red means you're below the altitude, white is on altitude, and green is above the altitude. And below that, you've got your wing flap position. You can get the center panel. This is your autopilot panel. You engage the autopilot using right alt and A, and the three channels of roll pitch and yaw will engage automatically. You can control the pitch and the heading channels using right alt with the arrow keys, and control the roll channel using the shift and the arrow keys. You'll be referencing the directional gyro and the artificial horizon while you do that. Underneath that are the gauges for your manifold pressures, tachometers, oil pressures, and the fuel pressures. Coming over to the co-pilot side of the panel, another airspeed indicator, outside air temperature, altimeter, oil temperatures, cylinder head temperatures, carburetor air temperatures, as well as a fuel quantity gauge, oil pressure gauge, and a de-icing pressure gauge. Up to the right, your heating system warning lights, as well as the landing gear lights, cargo door open warning light, and some landing gear and hydraulic system pressure gauges. I'm looking over here, this is your cow flap controls. In game, they're manually controlled between open and closed and intermediate positions, uh, but in real life, the trail position um, it's an automatic adjustment which would be done depending on the airspeed. So as you slow down, they would open. As you speed up, they would close. But this may not be functional for a while. On the wall here, it's going to be the same stuff that's on the pilot side. And up above the co-pilot, you've got the oxygen supply warning box, the radio, and the oxygen regulator. Now over and behind the pilots here, a bit hard to get in this position. There's the hydraulic control panel, the flap handle, and the landing gear handle. Underneath that red door would be the engine fire extinguishing controls. Over to the right, which propeller the ice rear stat, and the manual fuel pump. Alright, there's only one spot left to go over, and that's going to be the whole throttle quadrant area. Here you've got the carburetor air control locks, which are L, 
carburetor air controls for C, and the engine fuel tank selectors. Coming down to the left is going to be your oil shutter controls with an O. Open and close those as needed. Below that, you got your elevator trim with the indicator, the rudder trim and indicator. And down under that, that's your autopilot server control. That's what will turn the autopilot on and off. Just there, the red button, that's going to be your parking brake. You release that by depressing the tow brakes, and you can set it by pressing the tow brakes, pulling out the parking brake, and then releasing the brakes. And on the right is the cross feed control. The right side of the quadrant area, you got the tailwheel lock and an aileron trim with indicator. As for your engine controls, you've got the white for propeller control, it manages your RPM, throttle in black, the manifold pressure, and red is mixture. Alright, so now that we've completed the cockpit overview, we're going to look at starting up the C-47. Like all the planes in L2, it's very easy to get this thing going. All you have to do is get it in a position to get to start, so I'm going to put the RPM all the way forward and crack the throttle a little bit. You'd leave the mixture at idle cutoff, that way you remove the risk of flooding the engine. And when you're ready, just press E and that'll get the engine start process going. I've left the lights on, so I have to turn those off. It's a switch to get them all off. There we go. Now the propeller is going to start cranking. If we look out the left side, we'll see that. And after it stops, the starter is going to energize. And then when the engine fires, you're going to set the mixture on that engine to the auto rich position. The engine's fired, we can then bring the mixture up to auto rich. And then you just repeat the same process with the number two engine. And now you can check out the pilot's notes for the C47. So now both engines are going. I'm going to close the window here. This will also close the cargo door if you had one open. That way you make sure that's closed when you take off. That's just done using the canopy command. Now we're going to taxi, so if you want, and you can release the tail wheel lock. And then depress the tow brakes to turn off the parking brake. We just add some power and we'll start moving. Now the runway's behind us, so we are going to have to do a 180 degree turn. Something to keep in mind is that you have a pretty big wingspan here at about 90 feet. So you can use some uh, differential brakes and power as needed to bring it around. Uh, you just want to make sure you have a bit of forward momentum before you start the turn. You don't want to be doing any kind of pivoting on the spot. But it's very easy to attack this airplane, so we'll skip forward towards the takeoff. Right, so for a normal takeoff without using flaps, you're going to have the propeller set to maximum, mixtures to auto-rich. Cow flaps would be in that auto-trail position, um, but we're going to leave them open for now. All the shutters will just be as needed to maintain temperature. And the tail wheel, we're going to make sure that's locked once we're aligned with the runway. And we'll roll forward a little bit just to make sure it's nice and straight. So as we approach the runway, we'll make the left turn using the differential power. Shouldn't need too much in the way of braking. Bring up the power on the inside engine to help slow down that turn to the left. Lock the tail wheel. 
roll forward a little bit and then we can bring it to a stop once we get ourselves aligned nicely. Once you get airborne there are a couple of power reductions you'll make. The first one's when you hit 120 miles an hour and the second will be at 500 feet and we'll just set climb power if you can maintain it. We'll look at that in a sec. Start increasing the throttle nice and smooth to get it above uh, the 46 inches we need for takeoff power. Use some differential power as needed to help you stay straight if you're in a crosswind. Now the nose is going to automatically come down on its own without us touching it. You can add a bit of back pressure to maintain the attitude you want. Once we're at 85 90 miles an hour, we'll rotate, get airborne, bring up the landing gear. We want to accelerate to our single engine climb speed of 120 miles an hour. And we can bring the power back to 41 inches in about 2500 RPM. Continuing the climb. Shooting for that 120 miles an hour in the climb as well. And once we start approaching uh, the 500 feet, you could bring back next power reduction if you wanted to to regular climb power but this could be performance dependent if you set it to that you may not be able to uh, make it efficient climb so it's really up to you if you want to make that decision with a normal takeoff done we'll have a quick look at a short field takeoff which involves using flaps the same setup this time we're going to be using 25 percent flaps to bring it out to the one quarter position there And you bring it up between 25 and 30 inches of manifold pressure. Now the brakes right now aren't strong enough to hold the airplane in place above 25 inches. So just set it to 25. And when you're ready to go, release the brakes. And increase the power to takeoff power. And just pushing forward on the stick. That way you're going to get that tail off the ground as soon as possible. Just hold the attitude you want. And again, once you reach, you know, flying speed. You can add that back pressure and start rotating. You can see we took off much earlier. We're going to bring the landing gear up. You can hold a climb as needed to be any kind of obstacle. Accelerate to 120 once you're clear. Start retracting the flaps. And then you're just back to your normal climb profile. Making that power reduction at 120 miles an hour. Back to the uh, 41 inches and 2500. And then at 500 feet, you can make that second power reduction again if you wanted. The next, we're going to have a look at the autopilot system for the C47. So, for the autopilot system, it's pretty straightforward to use. Um, we'll turn it on using right alt and A. And uh, looking down at the knob, it's currently turned off. So what you want to do is hold an altitude, get your airspeed nice and steady, and then when you're ready, you can turn the autopilot on, indicated by the directional gyro, which syncs up, the top and the bottom match, and now the autopilot's on, and say we wanted to climb 100 feet, we can increase our angle of attack by a little bit, I'm watching the artificial horizon, the airplane's going to pitch up, We're going to initiate a climb. And once you're happy with whatever altitude you've reached, so we'll pull it off at 4300. We'll lower the nose back down and level the plane off. Now if you're going to change headings, I recommend any small changes, maybe 10-15 degree increments, because the airplane's going to have a tendency to cross control because it wants to maintain that bank angle. So if we use the yaw control to adjust the directional gyro to show east, see it's going to change over so that they'll match but you can see the airplane's also cross controlling the left aileron because it wants to maintain um, that level attitude. Now we'll look at how to do power drops. Right so setting up for a power drop will be at about 800 feet AGL but this height can change um, depending on you know weather conditions what's going on around you in terms of combat so 800 feet is a good starting point 
with an airspeed of 110 miles an hour. If you look at the manifold pressure gauge, you'll see that the left engine is about 12 to 13 inches, while the right engine is powered up. In real life, you run that left engine lower, so this way the propeller blast doesn't hit the jumpers as they bail out. And obviously you've got the right engine up to compensate uh, for the lower power from the left engine. It's got a little bit of interesting controlling going on here between, you know, your rudder input and your aileron input. Because you want to try and maintain a steady course, altitude and airspeed as long as possible and get ready for the jump. You can see that because we've maintained this altitude for a while, the altitude limit switch is selected um, this altitude we're at and you see that the lighting system shows a white light which means that we're on the altitude that we've been trying to maintain we're pretty much ready to let the troops bail out so you press the B or bomb key to let the troops jump so once the jumping is complete Switch will go down to being guarded again, alarm goes off, and then you can recover to normal flight. So now we'll look at landing the C-47. So for landing the C-47, uh, you'll need to make sure the autopilot is turned off. The mixture is in auto rich, and you get your airspeed below 160 miles an hour. So when you're on downwind, you can extend the landing gear, the propellers set that to 2250. Rear speed gets about 120 miles an hour, then you start your base to final turn. And whatever flaps you want to use is up to you. I want final though, your rear speed is going to be about 85 to 95 miles an hour. I'm going to go for a tail load landing in this and not a three point. As we turn on downwind, to get the spacing right, you need to lean forward a little bit in the cockpit so you can see the wing a bit better. Ideally, you want the runway to be underneath the marking on the wing there. That'll be good spacing for about a thousand feet of uh, pattern altitude. So we're below 160 miles an hour. We can drop the landing gear. I'll set that to 2250 RPM. You can start adding some flaps if you want it as well. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer. I'm going to put out about a quarter's worth. As you get ready to make this base to final turn, I want you to think the airplane's about 45 degrees from the runway. Flaps out to a quarter, start making the turn, and reduce the power a little bit so you get about four to five hundred feet per minute descent rate. It can be hard to see the runway as well, so you are going to have to shift forward in the cockpit in order to see it. But try and get yourself in about 30 degrees angle of bank in this turn, and it should work out pretty nicely. The runway, we can start getting some more flaps in once we turn final. So now we're getting ourselves lined up, start reducing the power more, get the rest of the flaps in so we create some more drag, let us have a steeper approach. We're going to slow the airplane down to between you know 85 90 miles an hour, somewhere around there. What's going to be key is because we're trying for a tail low landing and not a three point landing, we're actually going to maintain a little bit of power in the round out on the flare. And once we touch down, we're going to cut the power. We keep flying towards the aiming point at the beginning of the runway. Maintain the power, round the airplane out, bring it up to an attitude that has you slightly tail low. As it touches, cut the power, you can start adding some brakes, let the tail come down nicely. Then as you get towards the end of the landing roll, you can unlock the tail wheel and continue taxiing as needed. That completes your tutorial on the C-47, until next time remember to fly safe and check your six.